We are in the Ross Morley showroom, Nissan dealership in Dubai, Shagside Road. We're going to have a look at the new Nissan Patrol Gazelle, which is their latest souped up 4x4. It's a bit special. It comes with a uh, Fat 55. Um, automated winch, which is always nice. Some extended wings on the side here. But a fantastic sort of uh, print. It goes all the way along the flank of the car. I see the bulging arches again. The gazelle is a nice paint job. The paint oxy. It's like a pearlescent off-white. It's got this monster safari snorkel. It's really fording. It doesn't happen very often out here, but occasionally we get flooded waddies. It means the car can pretty much be submerged and the engine will keep going. Very nice here. The alloy wheels. Huge all-terrain tyres. Incredible tyres and then the Gazelle logo, which is a feature of the car on the inside of the hub. There, the hub cap, so that's pretty nice to give you an idea of sort of you got your racing shocks under the engine bay. There, you get quite a bit of clearance, probably. 12 inches, I would say. Clearance at the front. Inside the car is beautiful. You've got a oh, fairly standard interior. Speedometer is maxed out at 220. I'm pretty much sure I can get up to that. Got your automatic gearbox with your 4x4 manual engage. You've got what looks like, I think, here a sub tank, which probably means you've got an additional or an extended petrol tank for those long expeditions. Passenger seat just reflects the driver's seat. Beautiful leather work and the gazelle emblem stitched into it. Very comfortable seats, kind of almost a racing seat. Enough for Probably eight cans of uh, Budweiser in there. And you've got the cup holders. It's actually nice. There's no, no things springing out that are unnecessary. Everything seems to be sort of functional and not too fancy. It's like fairly, it's like a no nonsense cabin. I would say. Steering wheel, a couple of cup holders, armrest, some comfortable seats and a fairly straightforward dash. That's cool there. If you close the door over, you see the leather work and the woodwork on the trim. Not sure if it's real wood or plastic or a veneer. Uh, and then your console up here. Oh, sunroof. It is a silly day in Dubai, it generally always is, almost. Uh, you got your lights, and again, some of store sunglasses, all the usual stuff. This one's fitted out with the two rows of back seats, so I think that would be seven seats in total. You can see just out the back window there, enormous spare tyre as well. So the seats will fold, obviously, and you'll have a Huge space. Expect all the usual stuff. Rear AC runs all the way to the back of the car. <sighs> nice. Particularly that on the side. Not sure it's worth the premium price tag to have a bit of embroidery on your seats, but it is a nice touch. And the panelling as well, of course. Even this is quite a nice feature. The seats pretty much 
It's just all manual. The lever bar forwards and backwards and then your adjustments are on a winder. So it's actually, I prefer that than having endless electrical motors that burn out after a year or two, wind up having to get replaced and all the rest of it. So, good for Nissan going back to basics with a few just sort of, uh, a few winders and mechanical, and a few mechanisms to get things moving around. So on the rear of the, the Gazelle, you've got a fairly uh, industry standard tow rope. You've got the double door opening. Whoop. So you would open here and then here. You've got here self-inflating tyres by the looks of things. Or well, at least you've got a compressor of some description. Probably self-inflating. That's an old feature from the, the military grade. Hummers used to have that. This is your second, well, your third row of seats. Second row of rear seats. I'm not going to try messing around with them. But if they were removed or flattened, have a very spacious back of car you'd expect that like I said AC blows all the way from the front to the rear nice styling close that over yep that over it's your 50th anniversary oh look at that the exhaust pipe, the Gazelle uh, branding, and there's your spare. Good rich all terrain. Jeez, look at that man, looks like the Grand Canyon of tyres. That's pretty incredible. Then everything else, apart from the wheel arches and the paint job, probably fairly standard, I would have thought. You've got here. Again, you've got your King Off-Road Racing shocks. 12 inches of clearance. Full rust proofing. And the Gazelle logo, start to finish. Lovely, eh? I do like the paintwork. It's interesting to note that it's not actually paintwork. You can maybe just see a seam there. This is a sticker decal that's been put on to the paint. I thought it was uh, this painted, but no, that's all sticker. I mean, obviously expertly done, but it's uh, it's not a paint paint job. It's a sticker decal. And then you've got the front, look at that. The Troll Gazelle. It is a monster. Price tag 230,000 AD. It's going to bring it in at a roundabout 48,000 pounds and 65 to 70,000 US. Anyway, you might be interested to pause that and have a look at the features. That's it then. Gazelle. A pretty special offering from Nissan Middle East. Just while I'm in the cab, I would say what this reminds me of more is like a classic 1990s 4x4. If you compare it to the Current model like the Patrol Platinum, their entire centre consoles, computers, and windy wheels and digital displays. There is no digital display. The air conditioning or the air flow unit is about as simple as you can get. That reminds me of like a, a Zizu Trooper in a model 1994 2000. Uh, Pajero. It's like uh, 
There are no bells and whistles. Everything's functional. And beyond the CD player, there's nothing on here. This sort of a looter. This is a 2018 model. It could be what a lot of 4x4 enthusiasts are most interested in, which is like a very much a stripped back to bare basics cabin. There's nothing much going to interfere with your enjoyment of being off road. You don't have to worry about digital suspension keeping in and automated this and all the rest of it. Like your functions are a manual. Um, 4x4 to engage your different levels of uh, off-road sort of capability uh, and beyond that there's nothing really that would separate this from probably my Model 2000 Pajero GLS it's bigger, it's more comfortable obviously it's a new build um, but even to the extent here I mean that's, you know the sunroof open closed I'm reaching up I'm opening it manually closing it manually there's nothing which is nice I guess if you're going off road for like a 10 day adventure or a week or even three or four days the less it can go wrong with the workings of your car uh, you know then the safer you are on your expedition and there must be a second fuel tank there is what I'm guessing Empty full and then there's a like a sub tank. And I would just say the back of the car that's hugely different as well to the uh patrol platinum. Patrol platinum has the armrest in the middle, it has the third headrest in the centre. Uh here you're looking at again a stripped back functional um basic cabin comfortable spacious but basic and i think that's great i think that'll appeal to off-road enthusiasts who are a little bit turned off by the amount of tech that's kind of got into uh in the modern day off-roading engine switching off because your oil pressure's fluctuating that's a problem that ford have faced over the past sort of six or seven years electronic motors that go wrong and it just winds up pissing you off a bit like to be honest because not only does it have to be fixed it has to be fixed at a cost and and it's nice i mean if a lever breaks it still has to be fixed but i'm sure you can probably find somebody to fix it for a lot less than the uh the official dealership charges for the sort of job anyway fantastic car Wish I could afford one. Obviously, I can't. Might as well, while I'm here, mention it's a 4.8 six cylinder uh, automatic transition, five speed box. Six gears often quite nice. And if you can afford the price tag of, as we said, just shy of 230,000 dirhams, you do get two complimentary Nissan Patrol flags uh, for off-roading safety so there you go you don't get that on the platinum plus probably would be worth mentioning that uh, stripping back the Nissan Patrol to its barest essentials in the cabin and enhancing the uh, exterior and also its expedition capacity has added an extra 25,000 dirhams to its price tag so the Platinum Plus, which is there, that weighs in at about 194. That is comfort on the road. The Gazelle, stripped back and um, ready for action, costs you 229,000. Put this in some sort of context. This is the Patrol Falcon, which is the two door version, and very popular for off roading. Uh, and basically, to be honest, it's the same interior as the Gazelle. This is manual, automatics are available. Um, but yeah, 
This is um, the same interior cabin as the Gazelle, only the leather work and trim is different. Everything's the same. All of the little compartments, the light fittings, the sunroof, the door. It's identical, basically. And there's the back of that cabin. And actually looking at the specs, with the exception of the fact this is manual transmission or automatic, it's the same engine as well. Just without the expedition features, the shock absorbers uh, and things like that. Interesting. You do get in a an embroidered Falcon logo, not quite as swanky as a gazelle, but an interesting quick comparison. That's a Falcon with a light bar actually, really a nice feature on the gazelle. I don't think it's on there though. The Falcon's got the uh, LED, the light bar. The Falcon, too though, so it doesn't have even, probably down to about a third of